E.M. Hotep. This is your host, Onitase Kuma, the founder of the African Bud Siblings and the author of the Book of Power. And I'm reading for you Lesson 16 of the Course on African Philosophy. Of course, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, commentary because this wouldn't be the pro-black perspective if I didn't add a little bit of commentary. You're listening to the pro-black perspective on KWAZ Radio, and you're at Lesson 16. We're almost three-fourths of the way. Uh, 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 like, we're going to do this. It's, it's happening. Come on, it's happening. <laughs> well, let's see. Lesson 16, it's just propaganda. So propaganda means to propagate or to make known extensively some particular phase of human intelligence. The desire is to convert or influence the people to the acceptance of the truth of that particular intelligence that is sought to be spread among them. Propaganda can be true or false in its origin or intent, but it is always directed at the public for the purpose of winning the support of that public to the sentiment expressed in the propaganda. If you hate a man, giving him a bad name well may explain one of the purposes of propaganda without truth behind it. Nearly all organized efforts efforts have a system of propaganda to convert people to their principles and get them to support them, even though they may not they be they may be of no merit behind it all. Propaganda is oh even though there may be of no merit behind it all. You know, that's fake in the funk, but you know, hey if it works, it works. Uh, I don't personally do it, but you know. Look, if I tell you I can spit, I spit. <laughs> Alright. Propaganda is all around you to make you buy a special brand of cigarettes, although no good, but advertised to be the best. To make you drink or use a certain brand of tea, telling you of its wonderful qualities and its everlasting benefits when there's absolutely nothing to it, and so on. Before the War of 1914 to 1918, the Germans were known to be the most cultured and scientific people in the world. When the war started, the other nations, in order to discredit the Germans and to hold them up to the world ridicule and the contempt of civilization, released the propaganda that classified the Germans as Huns and barbarians. This also revealed how organized intention can be carried to the public for public acceptance without thought. Uh, that is a pretty amazing thing to admit because this is what happened to African people. At one point, African people were the most cultured and scientific people in the world. And today we are seen as what? Barbarians. Uh, uh, there's a sister, she wrote an article. Uh, her name is Saunders, uh, Catherine Saunders. And she wrote an article on, uh, I thought it was a really interesting article. It was about there's a song, there's this woman, she's a rapper, I can't remember her name, but, I mean, she's famous. She wrote a song called Savage, and everybody's singing it, it's like a famous dance. During this coronavirus pandemic, when people couldn't go out, they are doing a challenge around this song, Savage. Uh, she's a very famous musician, so I don't know why her name scares me, but, uh, even Beyonce eventually does a remix for this song. Uh, the idea, though, is that the song is promoting this idea that a woman, a black woman, is a savage. And she's bragging about it. She's, you know, I'm a savage. Yeah. Classic. Hood, you know, whatever. Uh, but that's the, that's the, that's what propaganda does. And, and you have black girls all over this world. Even, even white women. Or white girls, whatever. Uh, but you have black people all over the world singing and dancing to this notion of being of, of black women being savages and this is this is not 1914 1918 not 1920 or or whatever it's not 1614 or or 1820 this is 2020 that black people are dancing and singing and yes shaking their asses at this idea that they are savages I thought it was a really interesting article because I didn't even like I didn't even, I didn't even process it. I was just you know at, by the time coronavirus you know I was just sitting down like uh, okay you know <laughs> like okay it's, everybody's singing a song but yeah that's that's this is the world of propaganda we live in. It's so subtle. It's subtle. The press, cinema, pulpit, schoolroom are all propaganda agencies for one thing or the other. The pulpit carries religious propaganda. The schoolroom carries educational propaganda. The press carries out written propaganda. The platform carries on oral propaganda. The cinema carries on demonstrative propaganda. These methods have been devised by the white man to spread his ideas universally among men. That is why he is able, in a major sense, to control the minds of the people of the world. Uh, you know... This is this is something to bear in mind because 
what you will notice is that yes journalism is very picky and choosy there was this one brother in fact he had this wordpress it was like cynical african or something and what he did was he compiled the different news stories that did not make major news the major news being like it would be major news in any other region but what happens is that he would compile a different story of a different white person doing some different depraved uh often sexually sexually or dissexual act uh that is you know homosexuality pedophilia uh among others but but mainly he was highlighting pedophilia and animalia and it was an article a different article for it every day across the united states but they're never national stories they're local stories at best never national stories and and that's just the stories that make it to the local paper the the reality is that things are cautiously crafted to shape and 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 keep the status quo and the and and as well as you know to keep the people in power in power and that's what you would expect of anybody in power if i were in power i would definitely want to continue to be in power in so far it in as much if i were not re re uh, retiring uh, soon, and even if I were retiring, I would still like my agenda to move forward, and that's just something. That's just a part of being a human being. the The idea that uh, that you would want otherwise, you know, speaks towards either you know speaks toward the idealism that really doesn't have a setting in in the real world. You know, in the real world, uh, people have agendas and people want to accomplish things, and people believe in themselves, and in believing in themselves this is what you have now you can say hey well it's better to no like like be realistic uh the white man i don't like to say good things about white people but i'm just gonna read it don't 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 quote me <laughs> the white man is a great propagandist he fully and completely realizes the value of propaganda therefore you must organize your propaganda to undo the propaganda of other people if their propaganda affects your interests the bible is religious propaganda the school book is literary propaganda the novels and books you read are also literary propaganda all calculated to bring about certain results beneficial to the propagandists. Never forget then that you are surrounded by a world of propaganda, all dressed up or cooped up to suit a doubtful public that is not careful about what it digests from without. The artist is also a propagandist. He paints pictures to convey the idea he wants to impress upon the non-thinking and doubtful public. The sculptor is also a propagandist. He chisels figures and portrays them to suit the aim or purpose he wants to achieve. The pictures of the Madonna and Christ and of the angels are painted portraying a white race so as to inflict upon the rest of the world the belief that Amon, the ancestors and the holy holiest people or families or whatever, are all white as well as Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were black. Now, of course, these are not real people, but you understand. They also paint the devil and the imps of hell black to impress upon the world the belief that all that is black is evil and all that is white is God, uh, is good and holy. Uh, this is a, a reason why I even, you know, had that double entendre, because Dr. Clark was saying that when he was younger, what he would observe is these, like he was like, let's say in church school or something, Sunday school or whatever you call it, and uh, he would observe, like someone would tell him, oh, the, like the, the school system would show him images of hell and heaven, and heaven had all these nice white faces, if you will, white smiles and ah, oh, you know, whatever, and then hell had all these black figures and black people, and he said, well, if that's hell, I'd rather be in hell. Now, of course, this is, and those people who know or read, uh, you know, ancient literature or older literature and, and correspond with ancient literature, you'll know that white people have purposely made black people devils a long, 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 long time ago. Okay, this is the ancient world. And and black people did likewise in turn. They said, you know what, if you're going to make the devil, your devil, your evil black, we're going to make our evil white. Of course, we forgot that. But the, the point being that, you know, white people have a historic agenda against us. And this is why it's important and imperative for you to remember what Chancellor Williams told you, which was that white people are your everlasting and eternal enemies. Well, eternal in so much as if insofar as one of you, one of us has to go. And I'm, and I'm just saying he's trying. He's trying to make his he's trying to make his interest come through. I wonder about you. Let's go. Tear from your walls all pictures that glorify other races. Tear up and burn every piece of propaganda that does not carry your ideas of things. Treat them as what? Trash. 
When you go to the cinema and you see the glorification of others in the pictures, don't accept it. Don't believe it to be true. Instead, visualize yourself achieving whatever is presented, and if possible, organize your propaganda to that effect. You should always match propaganda with propaganda. Have your own newspapers. Do you have it? No. Have your, your own artists. Do you have it? No. Your own sculptors. Do you have it? No. Your own pulpits. Do you have it? No. Your own platforms. Do you have it? No. Put your own books. You have that. You have one book. Right here, you got Book of Power. <laughs> but no, you don't have your own books. And show your own motion pictures and sculpture your own subjects. Never accept as yours subjects of another race, but glorify all the good in yourselves. Keep your home free and clear of alien objects that glorification of other races. Otherwise, your children will grow up to adore and glorify other people. Again, I'll say it again. Keep your home free and clear of alien objects of glorification of other races otherwise your children will grow up to adore and glorify other people put in the place of others the heroes and noble characters of your own race there's actually a, a, a dude i know went to his house i was like why do you have that picture of jesus it's a, uh of you know the picture of the christ if you will uh it's a white man it's i forget michelangelo's uncle or something like that i don't know but it's this white boy and he's like is nothing. I still understand the black plague. And black, 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 black. He's going. He he has every intention. Or let's say he married a white woman. He married a white woman. Down brother. He was a down brother, and he married a white woman. Keep your home free and clear of alien objects. Okay. Never allow your children to play with or to have white dolls. It will give them the idea of having white children themselves. Give them the dolls of their own race to play with, and they will grow up with the idea of race love and race purity. Watch the newspapers, magazines, and journals daily for propaganda against your race or your institutions, particularly against the UNIA. Rush into print immediately a defense of your race institutions and organizations from any attack. Never allow an insult propagated to go unanswered by you. This is actually pretty interesting. A lot of times we say, you know what, ignore it. But, and to some extent I say, I agree. I say, if white man says something bad about me, I don't really give a shit. You know? Sorry, I don't mean to curse. But, I don't really care. But, but at the same time, I, I understand. You know, sometimes you have a reputation and and it's 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 only you who will keep your reputation clean only you so be ever vigilant to down anything by way of propaganda that dishonors or discredits you don't help the other fellow to carry on propaganda against yourself or your race all propaganda comes from the arranged desire of individuals and not from a race as a whole it is the thinkers and leaders who originate propaganda by insisting on it why on its wide distribution they get other people to think as they like so again you know a lot of times we say hey man white people do this much blah, blah, blah. no it's just the thinkers and leaders of the white people it's just the thinkers and leaders of the white race it's not necessarily all white people right that's not to say that all white people don't benefit it's not to say that all white people aren't aren't against you because they have to be they're in a different nation from you you are a nationless people and they are a people with a nation that has a self-interest or has a national interest in in keeping you nationless but you have to go against that and they're they're not necessarily thinkers or leaders in their community not all white people are thinkers and leaders but you as a thinker and leader must say to yourself what can i do for my people and 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 that i'll tell you soon enough but keep going don't accept the thoughts of others through propaganda unless it coincides with yours don't follow the band down the street because it plays sweet music to the propaganda of the circus manager he may lead you into the circus tent and take away your pocketbook that is to say don't get on anybody's bandwagon because he may drive you to hell with his sweet music like the pied piper of Ham hamlin who played his sweet pipe and led the rats out of the city and into the sea and drowned them. Propaganda organized by somebody else is always calculated to take advantage of you. Don't help them do so. Always ta ask, what is this about? What is the object of this? Who has sent this out? What is he aiming at? Will it hurt me in my race? Is he trying to get an advantage over me? Is it honest? Is it true? If you ask these questions of all the propaganda that comes up before you swallow it, you'll be able to take care of yourself. Uh... That's what you got to ask about these other propagandists. These propagandists who are saying things. Are they trying to take advantage of you? Most of these people are. There are there are false groups like, you know, ADOS and FBA and all that kind of nonsense. There are, and of course, you know, that, that's America. But that, that's everywhere on this planet. You're going to find some group of Ascati who are trying to lead you astray. 
do not give them the benefit just block them ban them just get rid of them they say something about you sure you address it you know address it publicly and let people know hey this is not how it goes not, nothing that goes this way but at the end of the day block them block them ban them don't sing the songs and repeat the praises that glorify other races. Sing your own songs and recite your own praises that glorify your own race. For instance, it is foolish for Negroes to sing or say, Britons never shall be slaves, when they themselves have been slaves and are likely to be slaves if they don't impress upon their minds that they are Negroes who will never be slaves again. Sing, therefore, Negroes never shall be slaves. Be careful how you sing religious hymns that have been written, dished up, and made popular by white writers to glorify the white race in the name of uh, their god, taking advantage of the silence of their god to impress inferiority upon your race, such as the great white wings of angels, the great white throne of our white god, wash me white as snow. All these are damnably vicious forms of propaganda against the black race. Though my sins be as scarlet, they shall be whiter than snow. Wash me in the blood, and I shall be whiter than snow. All these things reflect the propaganda designed by the white man to glorify his skin and his race as against the black imps of hell and the black devil and the black pale of doom. The idea of the white man making black a symbol of mourning and sadness is just to show the extreme of the purity of whiteness and its joy and happiness. Reverse this. If possible, teach the Negro that when he is in mourning, he should wear white, and when he is happy, to wear black. You know, this is actually a pretty interesting thing. When I went to Jamaica for a funeral, uh, I, was in, I was there, and I was like, I'm not going to wear white to no, I'm not going to wear black to no funeral. So I'm going to show up, you know, in whatever color I want, right? Uh, or no, I was like, I'm, I'm still wearing black pants. I look good in black pants. But I'm going to wear whatever shirt I want. I ain't going to wear all black. Uh, I show up, and would you believe that a lot of the people in Jamaica are wearing all white to the funeral? And you're just like, what? <laughs> like, wait a minute, what? Okay. All right, this is propaganda. This is meeting propaganda with propaganda. The hatchet with the hatchet. The stick with the stick. And the stone with the stone. Everything on earth is man's creation. So out of man's propaganda and mind, he has created his special system of opinion to meet his designs. Therefore, customs are based upon acceptance of propaganda skillfully engineered. Have your own propaganda and hand it down through the ages. Write your own poetry and recite it. Compose your own songs and sing them. Write your own interpretation of the scriptures and history and teach them as far as the interpretation of others affect your race. Challenge the thought of any book of other literature that dishonors or discredits you in any particular way and give it the widest publicity. Okay, sorry. Challenge the thought of any book Challenge the thought of any book of other literature that dishonors or discredits you in any particular way and give it the widest publicity so as to undo the harm intended. Remember always that an error not corrected ultimately becomes a fact. Never allow false statements or allegations against your race to become current and pass into the history as if they were facts. This is so important. It's so important because here I am. I'm looking at this dot, this this speech. I'm going to give you guys. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna review a a, a a round table. Malcolm X is sitting with James Farmer and two other brothers, and they're discussing um, the current events of the time, which is you know the race. Talk, like the race discussion, you know, how to get civil, civil rights and so on and so forth. And as they're discussing it, they're bringing up how mass revolt and violence led to uh, Kennedy and them uh, pushing forward civil rights legislation. Okay? So they're talking about how violent riots were fundamental toward the civil rights, uh, you know, the achievement of civil rights for Africans, uh, Africans in the, in, in, in the America. Uh, in the United States, if you will, right? And then now, fast forward 40 years later, we're, we're all like, well, we don't want to be non-violent again. We got to do something different. We can't have that non-violence anymore. Y you see, if you do not, if you do not uh, give the widest publicity to the facts, the fiction will become his story. So what I do is I compile the book of power so that the 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 truth can be 
there and published and it's for you to widely distribute I'm widely distributing it because you know you it should be on your bookshelf you have to widely distribute it as well so definitely share with others this book and if they don't know what the book is about hey I got them here's here it goes Okay, so I know books. I know All books. Right, so let me tell you about a book. All right, okay. It. So the goal and objective is to be selective, elective for knowledge with the black directive, checking sources, heritage, and legacies with the brilliance to defeat our nemesis, the book of power. So apt to name, esteemed and fame for informing the brain and doing the same as the ancestors before us. Saying cope and after the life chorus, wisdom is the key against danger. And the team can lead us or lead the changes. We are doing Africa with no strangers. Do you hear us? Okay, hold on. We can't continue to read the second fiddle. African power is the end of the fiddle. Let's build a nation the likes we've never existed. The motto here too far, we, we persisted. Persisted. Better, We resist the best. We build it. We'll raise the roof and break through the ceiling. Killing the way the change we were given to stop just the vibe and start robbing and living. Africa's about to host superpowers. China and US back up with time powers. No one can be free without freeing themselves. But freedom is shown and owned on bookshelves. The book of power, a key for liberation. There's no domination. Where this education because ignorance is man's main weakness. All of the spoilers and we don't teach this. Then the pages of sages came to quit. I can delay, desolate, near it. Garvey and Zinga and Cook. 500 pages to pass the most books. The task is told to bring up the continent. You will hold the tongue for the Confident. Have some pride and push forward your test. Your leaders are leaders. One of the best. The book has science covers violence, self reliance, and does away with silence. The time has come for the work to get done and build up a land that was second to none. We'll organize, technologize, strategize a new Africa before our eyes and blackness will be the complexion we see. Anytime we envision what it means to be free. So come join minds, read what is written. Here be solutions, no longer hidden. Nothing works in theory, all that works, works and works. So it's time to put ourselves first. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Tell your friends, family, and neighbors. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Tell your friends, family, and neighbors. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Tell your friends, family, and neighbors. Change the leaders and lead the changes. Book of Power. So the Book of Power can be purchased on Amazon. Just click on the link below. All right, send me a hotel. To lend my eye, to shine his back, to lend my eye, to shine his back, to lend my eye, to shine his back. Oh, tap. All right, family. So let's get back to the drawing board. We're going to discuss uh, war. And like I said, you know, not a much better books. Sorry for cursing. I curse a lot now. I don't know why. But there's not many books better on war. <laughs> I mean, there are. there are. There are some pretty good books on war, actually. But there aren't many better books. Because part of war is nation building. And you're not going to get that nation building sense. Uh, as well as that sense of, of justice. You have to understand that the morality of, of your people... The morality of your cause is probably utmost, and there's no better book on morals than the Book of Power. So, you know, that keep that in mind. Let's go. War! <laughs> Somebody's going to say, what is it good? No, all right, let's stop. War is the hellish passion of man let loose in opposition to man. It sums up the cruelty of man towards man. It always aims at the stronger taking advantage of the weaker to gain that which could not have been acquired otherwise because of the failure to use human reason. War comes when men fail to adjust their differences with reasoning. War is something that is natural because you understand that people are going to be... You cannot... Listen to me. You cannot adjust your differences with reasoning. You can't. There are some people who are looking to exploit you. Period. When, when the white man travels... The white man... You have to understand how far Europe and Africa is. It's farther than you've ever walked. <laughs> you know, and I'm not saying, you know, Southern Europe and Northern Africa. I'm saying the interior of Africa and, and, and even the interior of Europe. He's traveled long and far. He's, he's cost so much money. He came to enslave you. You're not going to reason your way out of that. You have to. Have to fight. And he's still in... 
Anywhere the white man is, he's traveled to. With the exception of Europe. Anywhere he is, he's traveled to. Long distances, great distances, at huge costs, and he wants slaves. You can give it to him. Or you can tell him to buzz off. But if you're going to tell him to buzz off, you have to organize and understand what it is you need to do. There's, not, there's nothing about reason. Don't forget this word. I don't even, I don't even look. You know, as I tell other people, Karis One says it. Look, rapping on the mic like this to me is just fine. Because if I really want a battle, I will pull out a nine. That's it. I, 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 you know, I'm a reasonable, I like doing reason, I like logic. At the end of the day, I have no qualm about shooting somebody. None. And you shouldn't either. If it means my liberty, if it means my liberty, if it means my nation, no qualm. So always be prepared for the exhibition of the vilest passions of men in war. Man has always warred against his fellow man. It started with Cain against Abel and has continued down through the ages and shall ever be so as long as man remains an unreasonable character. And man will always be an unreasonable character because one wishes to exploit and the other one wishes to reciprocate. And reciprocity and exploitation are diametrically opposed. You can't have one. You can't have the two of them. So if you are about my eye, you cannot have this fact. You can't. No generation has shown that man intends to become wholly reasonable. Therefore, in time of peace, prepare for war. So as not to be caught unprepared by your enemy, who will naturally be the stronger, if he is prepared while you are not prepared in using the implements of warfare. War is not a good thing. And that's, that's where, I, this is where, he, this is where, war is a good thing. War is a great thing. War is a great thing. War is a great thing. Say it with me. War is a great thing. War is not a good thing, but man is also not a good being. You must expect war from his disposition. All things are fair in war to win the advantage over your enemy. Okay? So that, that, that's a famous quote. Uh, that's why people say something. All, all is fair in love and war, which is a frightening thing to say. But, but that's what he would say. So, like, just, just FYI. When there is war, use all the implements at your disposal to defeat your enemy. Do not discuss terms while you are warring. Discuss them after you are victorious. Now, obviously, there's some limit to the implements, I would say. But, you know. You know. Like, again, you'll be discussing these terms. You'll be discussing these limits. And then you will be destroyed. You know, you were... How long were you enslaved? How long were you colonized? How long were you... How long were you under another people's feet? How long were you alive? It's been longer than that. Do not discuss terms while you are warring. Discuss them after you are victorious. When war comes, all resources of intelligence and wealth, all utilities are placed at the service of those who conduct the war to make them victorious on behalf of those for whom they are warring. Therefore, have in view the obtaining and controlling of all such resources, factors, and utilities that be necessary as ammunitions of war. Understand, too, that these people who, who conduct this war for us are the conductors of the war, are the generals. Do you have any generals? Come on. You're playing a game. An African war without an African army is what? Go review the website. There may be righteous wars as well as unrighteous wars, depending entirely upon the civilization that makes the war or defends itself in war. It may be war to put down human abuses in favor of human virtue. The war makers have always justified war in some way or another. If you become engaged in a war, always have justification for your engagement. If the war is not yours, get something out of it before you go into it and complete it for the good of others. Never go into war foolishly. Never sacrifice your life without good results for your cause. War is the best time to take advantage of your transgressor, whoever he may be. Whenever, whenever he is engaged in war and he so promises you nothing, you will never get anything from him in time of peace. Therefore, during the time of war, make your bargains before you help 
anybody else in war. If you are suffering from the abuses of others and there should be a threat of war against them from some other source, encourage it because it will be your chance to force a square deal. The more other people war among themselves, the stronger you become if you exercise good judgment. So this is this is a important concept, as I say. If you are organized, you could take advantage of America's disorgan of America's uh let's say ugh, whatever is going on in America <laughs> right you could take like 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 the pandemic or the uh, the riots and whatever you could take advantage but you're not organized so so you're just kind of oh what's going on about third you know uh and that's 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 a problem that's a problem for us we have to be organized if we are if we're if we don't have a nation at least be organized if you don't have a nation at least have an organization if you don't have either like what are you doing what are you doing you're breathing air. That's it. You're just breathing air. Divide your enemies so as to gain your advantage. Always keep them divided so as to be able to gain the advantage. Your only hope of escaping the hate and prejudice of other people is to keep them severely occupied with other problems. If they have nothing else to attend to, they will concentrate on you and your problems will be aggravated. While others have gone to war, try to be at peace among yourselves to gather the spoils of war. Never talk war openly to your enemies, but be prepared for war. If you talk it, they will become prepared waiting for you. Keep the other races divided and fighting each other as much as you can so as to take advantage for yourself. Again, they're going to be preparing for war while you're sitting down talking about it. No, don't do that. If they have no other problem to occupy their time, they will turn to you and turn on you. Keep them occupied otherwise. The more confused they are worrying over their troubles, the more time you will have to get out of your trouble. So with this, like a good example is you can bring up China. You're like, oh, China, you suck, blah, blah, blah. China's trying to do this to you. And Russia's trying to do that to you. And, and this is another thing I want you to understand. War is not really fought between man and man. Who are the combatants when it comes to wars? Well, I just said it. China, Russia, uh, United States, Britain. What, what are these? These are nations. So war is not fought between man, and that's, that's a misunderstanding on the part of uh, Garvey. It's not fought between races either. Races don't fight each other. It's fought between nations. You listening? So unless you have a nation, you this whole war thing is just, just, just you talking. It's 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 a joke. It's a joke, and and and, and until and, and it's not funny. It's a joke, but it's not funny. I want you to understand nations. I want you to understand nationhood, and this is why I give you uh, this 545 page book called the Book of Power. Read it, learn about it, indulge it, get with it. But thank you so much for listening, and I'll t I'll talk with you another time. Uh, Shamiam Hotep.